Hello, BookTube. Welcome back. Uh, this is Noah, and thank you for visiting my channel again. Uh, everyone who reads it must converse. Um, for those of you who it is again, uh, this will be a little bit of a different video for me, though I will review a book, um, give, a, give my take on a, a work. It's a little bit different because I'm going to start it off with a little bit of backstory, a uh, personal backstory, and a tribute to an amazing uh, drummer, and an amazing lyricist, and an amazing writer, and an all-around amazing person. That person is Neil Peart, the drummer from Rush. On January 7th this year, we uh, lost Neil Peart. Um, he, he succumbed to brain cancer, a, 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 a form of, that he had battled for three, over three years, kept it really quiet. Neil, Neil Peart is a very, was, was a very um, introverted, you know, kind of solitary guy. So it is not a surprise that, uh, you know, it wasn't known beforehand. But, um, for those who don't know, Rush is an amazing band and if you don't know Rush I would I would send you straight to a album called per Permanent Waves it's amazing but you can also uh, kinda take your pick you know they have so much good stuff and, and a huge uh, library a huge catalog of work it's a three-piece band the mighty triumphant they are known as um, well, a drummer a guitarist, Alex Lyson, and a bassist slash keyboardist and singer, Getty Lee. So I'll refer to them as Getty and Alex from here on out. And Neil Peart um, is the drummer, but wrote all the lyrics. So he was a writer, and he was a writer in his own right. So he wrote what can can be termed uh, music music books or travel books and and he sometimes mixed the two he would he, he was a uh, uh, you know in, in love with his motorcycle there is a book uh, you know when once uh, once we had lost Neil Peart I had never read anything that, that he had done before you know it's enough just to hear his lyrics amazing lyrics um, on Rush Rush's music but um I picked this up in a used bookstore. This is uh, called Roadshow. Landscape with Drums. This is the Rush R40 tour, or R30, sorry. And there's Neil on the back, on his bike, taking a cruise. He, he drove a BMW bike, um, an amazing little machine. And... I um I was talking. It, it, it's especially hard uh, for me and for my for my dad because uh, my dad learned to play guitar because of Rush. You know, back in um, <coughs> back in the day when they were coming up, they uh, you know my dad was is from uh, upstate New York, Jersey, that that area. Uh, grew up in upstate New York and loved Rush. You know, Rush is, 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 a, is a huge influence on his life. And so he played Rush. I learned to play guitar when I was uh, in middle school. I started learning. By the time I was in high school, I was hooked. It was and continues to be a hobby, a passion of mine. And I learned uh, a lot of Rush back in the day. Because I loved it, and I would ask. And I, my dad was always playing it. I heard stuff for, you know, all my childhood from Rush. So one of my greatest uh, achievements, young, uh, learning guitar, was to play Brunes Band, which is an opening on the Exit Stage Left album, an opening for a song called The Trees, that is just a solo acoustic guitar piece. It, it sounds difficult, it is fairly difficult, um, you know, it's hard to say. There's there's just a huge spectrum of, you know, what's difficult and what isn't on guitar. But uh, it was an accomplishment for me. 
and I, I love to play it still. What a beautiful little piece. Um, so, when when uh, when when Neil Peart died, uh, me and my father had talked. We've talked about it over and over. We've shared stories of growing up and listening to music and and the different stories from his perspective and from mine um, of of the effect and the influence that Rush had on our life. And he 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 suggested. He, they they know that I have a, uh, a a booktube channel. He suggested that if if he buys me a, a book by Neil Peart, then um, I would read it. I said I would read it, and I'll do a review on it. Well, it's going to turn into a two parter. This is the this is the first part, and that book that he got me is Ghost Rider. Travels on the Healing Road is the name, and if you see. The uh, picture there, there's a motorcycle up on its uh, center stand in the middle of the road. That's how, and, and every chapter in this book, the heading of the chapter is going to have, you know, a, uh, a small little title. This one is Westering, Chapter 2. And then there is a picture in... At, at that point in his journey of his bike up on the center stand um, in the middle of the road. That'll come into play in a little while. So uh, the little that's uh, that's that's the uh, you know my, my personal you know uh, testimony as to the um, the effect that rush had on my life and uh, the, um, the the huge loss that it is to know that I mean I'm I'm so happy that I got to see them live. I saw them off of a tour of of, a, of an album called Vapor Trails in which they played some of their greatest stuff that they've ever done. Natural Science, um Free Will. Um it's just amazing. Uh so I I'm so I'm happy that I saw them because now um you know even if Getty and Alex get another drummer and do a tour which I don't know if they will or not. If they did do something like that, you know, it's not going to be the same. No, but uh, Neil Peart changed the game. He upped the level um, for drummers uh, across the board. Drummers, uh, you know, all over. They know uh, how how amazing Neil Neil Peart is and uh, what an influence he's had on music and and on drumming specifically. So a little bit of a backstory to Ghost Rider, and then I'm going to give you my uh, my take on uh, just the first uh, the first uh, you know couple hundred pages is what I'm through, and then I'll do another video the the last part the 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 entire book. So the the book opens up with Neil uh, suiting up to go on a on a on a on a drive on a, on on his motorcycle, and he has to go. It's a it's a it's a life or death um, decision that he go, and then we get a little bit of the story of why why he's going on this uh, this uh, adventure, um, why why he must go, and in uh, about nineteen ninety seven. I believe. Neil Peart and his wife lost their 19-year-old daughter in a car accident. It was um, no, no, nobody else involved. The, his daughter, Selena, is her name. Selena um, left their, their residence um, to go back to, uh, to where she was uh, going to school. She was about to start um, start start uh, a college and so she leaves and that's the last time that they saw her her uh, her car lost control on a, on a road in in Canada and that that was it the next uh, thing was uh, a, a, a police uh, detective coming up to their door and 
giving them the most horrible news, I'm sure, that they have ever heard and, 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 and thought that they would never hear. What a loss, right? Mom, 19-year-old girl, with, with all the opportunity in the world ahead of her. her the mother, Jackie, is, uh, is Neil, Neil Pert's wife. Jackie um, ne never recovered from that. Jackie was depressed and upset, and, 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 and they did, you know, trips. They did what they could. He was, you know, focused on her. The story, you know, is that he was focused on her, and, and, and they were together, you know, you know going, going through this, but inconsolable. Took a trip to London for a few uh, months. Came back, and Jackie, um, within a matter of months of the, uh, you know, a couple months, of, of the news uh, contracted uh, cancer. He says in the story that it was cancer uh, by the diagnosis but we all know that it was a broken heart and that Jackie was actually you know in, in some way relieved that there was that there was uh, some some uh, some, you know, f some, that she would be released from this pain that she was in. And they took a trip to Barbados. They went and stayed down in Barbados for a couple of months. And while in Barbados, uh, Jackie uh, passed away. So together, over the course of ten months, Neil Pert lost his daughter and then lost his wife. And had... You know, like I said, this is a solitary, uh, an, an introverted, very solitary guy um, in his life, even though he's the drummer to a, 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 an insanely huge rock band. Um, he was always, you know, down to keep to himself. He was a big reader, big reader, Neil Peart. He's read everything. Loved Jack London. Loved Faulkner. So, um... He, he went back to their lake house up in Canada on, on, on some lake and, and spent a lot of time, a couple, couple, you know, maybe six weeks, a uh, couple months, maybe, there alone and got to a point where he knew if he didn't leave that that place would be the end of him. In order to stay alive, he had to go. He had to do something. He had to get out. So he suited up. He took all the supplies that he would need to go for as long as he could, you know, needed to, and he left. And he went on this journey right here. This was his journey to uh, try to heal himself. And I'm going to uh, give a little give a little part here. Exhausted I might have been, but I was also relaxed. My first day staying in one place had turned out pretty well. Just to preface that, you know, he's writing, uh, you know, 900 miles a day. He's, he's writing from dawn till dinner time. And he'll stop somewhere, have his dinner, and then walk in the evenings and then go to the hotel and sleep and wake up the next morning at dawn and do the same thing again. That's what he's doing uh, over and over and over and over. Um, I think, I think that, or, you know, by the time, by where I'm at now in the book, he's maybe been on the road, uh, you know, two months, um, not two months yet, just under, under two months. And it's something like, you know, 15 or 16,000 miles that he's covered. It's just it's just all day riding these roads and in the evenings map 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 while he's uh while he's uh, having his dinner. Some days he might do something like a hike if he's if he's in a uh, a place for it. He's visiting some national park areas. There's always there's always places like that around, you know, he's he goes over towards Alaska goes down to uh, Vancouver 
and then takes a ferry down to Vancouver and then continues on his bike. So, um, you know, he's, he's gone through the Rockies and around the Rockies. He's now in, in the book, he's, he's in Nevada. So this is, this is early in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the trek. Exhausted I might have been, but I was also relaxed. My first day staying in one place had turned out pretty well. As always, the main thing was to keep moving. Keep active. Take that little baby soul for a ride. It just took will. And I knew I was always just barely hanging on to that necessary resolve. I was still overcome by tears and abject sorrow several times a day, but I let those spells pass. And to avoid the helpless tailspin of spiraling down into the abyss of memories. Those memories were always with me, of course. So, he, he has a sense that, he, um, that his soul is, is, uh, is, is, is hurting and crying out. And he calls it his, his little baby soul. Because it is this little, uh, this little uh, shriveling thing now and in order for it to not completely you know evaporate he is going on this trip to try to find some healing to try to find a way to keep uh, going after losing everything so um, it's so bittersweet for me to be off the heels of losing him to brain cancer, reading a book about him getting over um, un un unbelievable losses. That being said, um, it is a very uh, it is it is a very um, poignant, you know, uh, story. It uh, it definitely. Uh, I get, I get the sense that, you know, you're right there with him. So, and then another part. <clears throat> On the short paved stretch of road leading out of town, I remembered riding the other way on the previous night, feeling proud and exhilarated. Now, I was frightened, weak, and weepy, truly dispirited, and as the paving ended, I found myself swearing out loud at the road, the rain, my life, and whatever power might be responsible for all my bad fortune. But lacking the solace of faith, I also lacked anyone to blame. So, you know, and Neil Peart is, uh, is an intellectual, um, for lack of a better word. And he, he, he definitely is having trouble processing the loss. That, that he's uh, had. But, you know, at least, at least he's doing something about it. It is, it is um, definitely a long road. And he is um, working through things as he goes. I, I'm not privy to all that yet. Um, Neil Peart is, is, like I said, a very uh, introverted, solitary kind of person. And so even in this, this writing, it, it, is, it is sprinkled throughout, and it's not bore out very much yet. What kind of healing he's finding? And, 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 and really, at this point, maybe he hasn't realized. Maybe he hasn't found a lot of healing yet. There's only little bitty glimmers where he says, you know, it, 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 I see that there might be some healing in the fact that I still can enjoy seeing a beautiful landscape. I, 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 I see a beautiful landscape and I get that sense of awe, of beauty. And I still, you know, I can, I can still enjoy that. That's, that's, that's good. That's a good thing. And so, with that being said, like when when I read that, I say I say, yeah, man, that that's that's that is a good thing, you know. But 
it's it's a daily process for him to you know to keep moving and to keep going. So just recently, in this, you know, he he was going across Nevada, and he was going across a big stretch in Nevada where where there was nothing, for no service stations, no gas stations, nothing, for eighty eight miles. I don't know if it's like that now. This book was written in 1998. That's when, uh, that's, that's, that's after when he had, had this, uh, did this, did this. And so, um, that's, that's, you know, I'm saying, you know, 20 years ago, 1998, uh, you know, it, there was an 88 mile stretch of just nothingness. So he stops in the middle of the road. He said he, he had this, uh, this 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 urge to just stop and park his bike in the middle of the road, and stretch his legs. There was you could, he he said he could see for twenty miles, either it, both directions because it's just flat you know flat desert, nothing, and he could see for twenty miles either way. He said nobody's coming, and it, and if if somebody starts coming, I got more than enough time to do whatever I want to do, to get my bike out of the road or whatever. He puts it on the center stand and he walks around, smoke a cigarette, stretch his legs, that kind of thing. And when he looked back, um, he saw the bike there in the middle of the road like that. And he had been calling himself the ghost rider. He's, he's carrying with him these ghosts, these memories, um, and, he's, and, they're, and they're constantly with him on his trek, and he's seen, finding ghosts everywhere. Jack London's uh, cabin, um, different, different, different uh, people from, uh, you know, uh, in history that built certain roads, you know, he, he calls them out. He's, a, he's, he definitely is all, you know, he's, he's keeping busy. And, um, you know, he finds these towns that are just, you know, uh, you know, def defunct, um, you know, logging towns or, or mining towns that aren't in use anymore, ghost towns. And he says, you know, more ghosts. I'm in the ghost town now, ghost, ghost rider in the ghost town. So when he saw his bike like that, he said, I saw, he goes, there's, there's the ghost rider, that's me. And he took a picture of it in this perspective, behind it, you know, as if it's riding away from me. And that's the picture of uh, the, the, the book here, and every chapter, and that's his name for himself, The Ghost Rider. So, um, I'm enjoying it. It's kind of a trudge for me. I'm not, I'm not big on, uh, you know, traveling books. I don't, I don't, I haven't written, read, read anything like that, anything like this before. Hearing about all the roads, but you, you know, and, and all the locales, all the, all the, all the, all the places he stops, when he services bike, when he does, stocks up on supplies, every snafu along the way, you know, he's gotten tickets, he's gotten pulled over, he's had bad meals, he's had, you know, a, a, a self, a, a, a full service gas station fill his, his bike with diesel, <laughs> you know, he's had, he's had, he's had his share of things on this trip, but uh, the trip, as he says, is not to anywhere. There is no destination and there is no time frame for this trip so I'm eager to see where it goes and I'm eager to see how Neil Peart worked through <coughs> something uh, you know a, a loss that that cannot be even fathomed I can't imagine and um, in that way I um, am taking my own trip as the Ghost Rider uh, along with him to uh, to remember him and to also heal from you know the loss of uh, of somebody who influenced my life in a, in a great deal um, and also uh, you know and, and through his through his death has uh, has you know given us all something uh, to you know, remember and then and, and just uh, also, you know, give thanks for a life well lived. This guy, uh, you know, 
did did something amazing. Like I said, he you know he cha he 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 leveled up the game on uh, on drumming. Uh, nobody nobody uh, could, would you know da uh, nobody would uh, would call into question that an amazing an amazing person. So uh, this is for Neil, and uh, this is for my dad uh, Terry Downton. Thank you, sir. And uh, book two. Thank you for joining me. And uh, we'll uh, we'll finish up the second part when I get uh, to the end of that one. Happy reading. Catch you on the next on the next one.